All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Democratic Television, DTV. Uh, my name is Jack Vaughn, and I am your host tonight. Um, I manage local campaigns, and this year I'm staying on as a field organizer for the Knox County Democratic Party, helping lift up Democrats across the ballot, including our guest today, uh, Reverend John Butler. He is running for school board, District 1, um, and I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce him to you all now. Welcome, John. Thank you so much. For sure. Um, could you uh, introduce yourself to everyone watching and tell us a bit about your background and why you're running for school board in the first district? Thank you. Uh, I am John Butler. I passed the Clinton Chapel Amazon Church uh, located in District 1 uh, in Mechanicsville. Uh, I also am presiding elder of the Knoxville District Amazon Churches, in which we have nine churches, including the one I pastor, that I that I help oversee. Uh, been in Knoxville for 15 years, transferred here to pastor uh, Clinton Chapel some 15 years ago, and became presiding elder about 13 years ago. Uh, I'm married to Reverend Donna Butler, uh, and uh, we have three kids. Uh, one of which graduated from Austin East in 2012, went on to better, big and better things, and now teaches school in Durham, North Carolina. We really taught three years of third grade, and now he is a restorative uh, program manager uh, at the same school he was teaching at. And I also have a daughter, uh, Jennifer Butler, who works for the Knox County School System. Uh, so uh, I've been a supporter and a uh, advocate for the public schools uh, all of my adult life. I'm a product of the public schools in Greensboro, North Carolina, where I was born and reared. Um, served as a pastor in Asheboro, North Carolina, and working with community, but also served on the school board there uh, about 20 years ago, as a matter of fact. And, and um, so since when we came to Knoxville, I began to get involved in community uh, in the Mechanicsville community, helping to establish a neighborhood watch, work with the police advisory uh, review committee uh, appointed by the mayor, served seven years. Uh, I have worked with a number of community organizations and uh, ended up uh, uh, being elected as president of the NAACP. And that's when we really started uh, working closely with the schools and have an advocacy at the at the uh, district level. Prior to that, we've been we worked with Maynard School, which is across the street. Uh, we adopted Maynard School, our church did, and began to do uh, work with the kids in the community. So uh, when my son was at Austin East and, uh, in his eleventh, uh, twelfth grade year, my wife and I served as presidents of the PTSO. Uh, so always was involved in schools. Uh, in around 2015, we felt the need to file an OCR complaint, an Office of Civil Rights complaint with the U.S. Department of Education because we were concerned with the equity uh, in Knox County schools. Uh, so, uh, but we worked with Knox County in terms of uh, zoning, in terms of where, our kid, where and how our kids would get to school, looking at curriculum and another, um, other things also with funding. So we've been involved with with uh, the support and advocacy of our schools. And now uh, with the vacancy in having a representative offering themselves, I, I after being talked to and asked about it, I chose to offer myself as, uh, as a candidate for this position based on my experience, uh, education, opportunities to serve and activity that we've been involved in here in Knox County. Yes, and thank you for stepping up and offering yourself as a candidate this year. I know many Democrats, um, myself included, are excited about your candidacy. Thank you. The ideas that you bring uh, to the school board. Um, so one topic that you mentioned uh, in your advocacy is equity. And mm -hmm. that's been of discussion and in the news lately with the uh, proposal of an equity statement um, mm -hmm. adopted by the board. Do you believe there should be an equity statement? And what do you think the role of KCS going forward in regards to equity should be? Uh, I think there should be an equity plan. Uh, statements are fine, but quite honestly, words are cheap. Uh, so we got to have an equity plan that states goals and objectives, and we have to put resources behind them, funding and 
and also personnel. The work will not get done just thinking about it and just talking about it. There is a state uh, policy that came out, I think, in 2018. There are other, uh, in, our, in the strategic plan for Knox County, there are some discussion things named that we were doing. We've done some of those things. I say we because I was on the first, uh, on the DO, DEO Disparities of Education Outcome Task Force, uh, which, which brought the recommendations to uh, Knox County Schools, and they have acted on many of them. Uh, the Ombudsman Program, uh, what used to be the DEO Task Force, uh, uh, now is the another committee uh, with acronyms, uh, but they're still working. Uh, the, 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 the task, the design is to work for equity. So uh, a, a statement would be great, a statement that has teeth in it, uh, a plan that has goals and objectives and a budget line item, uh, a person that will make sure that it happens. Amen to that. Um, over the past two years, there's been a lot of challenges that goes without saying, um, and we've got to make sure that our kids are keeping up, um, with reading levels, um, mm -hmm. not just testing scores, but being able to apply themselves in the community. Right. Um, so when you take office in December, I think it'll be, um, how do you hope to lead the fight for these kids that have uh, faced these same challenges that we have over the past two years? Uh, we, we have to make uh, uh, reading, uh, math, uh, we have to make those priorities. Um, a lot of the other uh, issues of, of running a school is so important. We can't leave those out. We got to look at what the barriers are to learning uh, and what uh, obstacles exist outside of the schools and those kind of things. But we have to make those items uh the most important learning is something that uh, is is not as easy as people would want to make it think. It it, it involves more than just uh, the teacher in the classroom. Although that is so very important, so one of the first things we need to understand is that we got to take care of our personnel. We got to take care of our teachers and support staff. So we got to make sure that we have a. Mm -hmm. a, a salary, compensation benefits. We have to make sure we have uh, uh, great learning environments and, and we have to make sure we have resources and all those things that go with uh, the learning process. So uh, that would be what uh, the fight that I would have. Number one is keep it focused on the students. Keep it focused on the people who we, uh, who we hire and who we work with, including volunteers, including community partners, uh, in, in all of those other, including parents, but, but making sure that we make that number one the number one. Yeah, and I like how you said, not just teachers, but other educators and support staff. Um, both yes. of my parents are KCS educators. Um, and while compensation, an adequate compensation would be great, um, making teachers' jobs easier in the classroom and in the schools is super important. Um, yes. Could you elaborate some on what additional support staff looks like and how in-classroom investments can improve not only the teachers outcomes but the students outcomes too yes i can elaborate on it but you know i think that what we have to do is listen to the people who are uh you know on the field <laughs> on the on the battlefield for learning uh those who are are you know where the rubber hits the road on the ground and listen to what they're saying that we need. But from my listening and observing, uh, you know, social workers, counselors, and they're not always the same thing, uh, community outreach persons, volunteers, uh, coordinators, um, obviously administrators, teachers, teaching assistants, that's an area, teaching assistants, is an area of persons who really need to look at compensation as well as work environment and, and status, how we, how they feel and how we tr they're treated. Because a great deal of time we, we're asking them to carry a load when teachers are out, especially this year with the uh, pandemic, uh, putting a heavy load on all staff. Uh, te technology people, IT people, um, 
So, uh, and I can, you know, obviously uh, all the people who make the school work, custodians, food service, uh, and librarians, I'm sure I'm leaving someone off the list. Uh, and then also we have to look at individual school needs. Uh, Sometimes it is that community person that reaches outside of the school to help students be ready when they get to school. So there's a number of things that uh, school security, uh, whether they be school security officers or school resource officers or whatever that looks like. So uh, but much more than when we think about administrators, teachers, et cetera. For sure, for sure. Um, an another key issue that I'm sure that you've heard from um, has been about vouchers. Um, yes. And that just recently, Governor Lee um, decided that putting a dollar amount on individual schools as of this morning, on, indi on individual students rather, um, what are your thoughts on voucher programs and those, the role of those in Knox County and whether you're for or against such ideas that are coming out? Let me say it like this first. I'm a proponent of public schools. I believe in public schools. I believe we should do everything we can do and put everything we have in the development and in having consistent, excellent public schools for everybody. And I'm, and I'm not for anything that takes away from public schools. And, in, in my, and what the discussions that I hear about vouchers is taking money away from public schools and giving it to private schools. That's, that's what I hear. That's what I'm understanding. And so, therefore, I'm against taking dollars out of public schools. Uh, we can have discussions. We can have an argument. The bottom line, my bottom line is public dollars are for public schools. Agreed. And that's, that's what we're dealing with, with the defunding of public education through, yes. through uh, these voucher programs. It's Right. And let me weigh in if you hadn't asked the question yet. Uh, I, I think charter schools uh, are the same, especially or particularly because charter schools are run by people who are outside of the community of the school. So a charter school works have worked well in certain areas of the country where it was created by the people who were in that community, who lived in that community, worked in that community, who managed in that community. A great deal of time when you look at charter schools, especially when they come from out of state, and even if you establish a board of people in the in the in state or in in the county, you still have people who are not of that community. And so they take public dollars and in the school, when they have a student that they want to suspend, expel, or get rid of in whatever way, they keep those funds for a period of time that they're not educating that child. So, so uh, anything that, that, that takes away from the development and strengthening of, of public schools, I'm not for. Well, thank you so much for your time, Reverend Butler. And I'll emphasize, vote. Uh, yes. The primary, the primary yes. is on May 3rd. And the Knox County general election will be on August 4th. And I encourage everyone to learn more at knoxvotes.org. Um, check your registration and get ready to make your voice heard. Um, so thank you, everyone. Thanks on behalf of DTV. And I hope you all have a good evening. Thank you so much. Peace and blessings. Hey, good evening. This is Greg McKay. We're uh, airing another episode of DTV, Knoxville's community media about local Democratic Party. Uh, my guest this evening is uh, Dylan Early. Dylan's running for county commission seat number 11. And uh, we're excited to have him here tonight. We're going to be talking about who we are and who, we, who you are and why you're seeking this seat. Uh, but first, give our audience a little bit more information about what you've done as far as community service and why you think you're the best choice for this seat. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm very proud of a lot of the work I've done in Knoxville. You know, I've been in Knoxville for about five years now. Um, and since then, you know, I've made it a focus of my community outreach to be involved in, in kind of education, um, not as a teacher, of course, but, you know, I was happy to be one of the founding members of the college and high school mentorship program at my former company. And in my summers and, or excuse me, in the, in the fall and the spring, I did a lot of work as a Tennessee Achieves mentor anywhere from Greene County all the way here to Knox County as well. So yeah, I've done that for multiple years. Like I said, I had multiple uh, mentees, of course, that I mentor both in high school and in college uh, through the program I helped found at my former company. 
And that's been the most of what I've done. Um, on the other side of things, I've, I've used my communication degree and communication skills to uh, provide some pro bono marketing communications consulting to some small businesses in Knox County, kind of help them get up off the ground with that, really get integrated into the market in Knox County. You know, helping small businesses is a huge thing for me. And being able to provide that service for free and also get some experience for myself was just an awesome opportunity. Oh, that's great. You know, I'm a mentor myself, Dylan. Um, it's a great program. I encourage anybody. They're always looking for mentors. It's, it's just yeah. a good way to help kids get through a tough time. Most I was of the a generation college student. So it's, you yeah. know, helping people get through any of those processes is incredibly important to me. You know, my family and I, we had no idea what we were doing when I started college. So to help <laughs> anybody through that process is it's important to me. Yeah, we're good. So tell us, let's go to some basics, Dylan. Uh, what office are you seeking? Uh, you're in the May primary. Do you have any opposition? So I'm seeking county commission at large C10. I don't have any primary opposition, thankfully. So not that I would oppose that, but it is nice to have a little break in the primary before you get to the general election cycle. Um, so I am unopposed right now in the uh, commission to C10 race for the primary. Okay. So you've got a May 3rd primary mm -hmm. and you're running at large. And just so people know, that means that anybody in the county who's qualified to vote, vote for you. Is that correct? Correct. Anybody in Knox County, whether you live in the city or in the county, if you are within the lines of Knox County, you can vote for me. OK, and then you'll go from the May primary to the August uh, general, Correct. which uh, that's that uh, it's got that pesky constitution that calls for a Thursday election. Indeed. The August yes. election is on a Thursday. It always confuses people. They think we had something to do with it. We didn't. It's in the state constitution. Correct. So so. Uh, it, now, is this a is this county commission? Is this a full time office? Does it does it pay a salary or or how does that work? Yeah, so it's a part time office. And to my knowledge, the latest salary is twenty seven thousand dollars annually, which if you ask me is too much. I, you know, I, I don't certainly don't think a part time position should be paid anything. I think it should be, you know, someone that actually wants to be there to do the service and not to receive any sort of compensation. But to my knowledge, the most recent salary is $27,000. And that was up from, I believe, eighteen or 19000 a couple of years ago. Okay. Interesting. Now tell us, give us a little bit. You'll be, you'd be on the county commission. Give us a little bit of just a broad overlook. of What does the county commission do? What are their responsibilities and what can we expect from commissioners? There are a ton of small little responsibilities the county commission has, but really to boil it down to two things is they oversee, you know, they've got budgetary authority on the budgets for all of the county offices, including the mayor's office, the trustee's office, um, how many, how much, how many of the county tax dollars go to the school board, to the sheriff's department, you know, and all the other smaller offices under the umbrella of Knox County. Um, of course, that's a huge deal controlling the purse strings for anywhere in Knox County is important and gives them a lot of authority over a lot of even the smallest actions and responsibilities of any department in Knox County. Uh, the other important thing they oversee is land use and development. Of course, that's an issue in Knox County right now. The way we're developing is, is irresponsible and unplanned and frankly kind of reckless. So getting to the commission, you know, two of my priorities would certainly be seeing an increase in funding for Knox County schools and making sure we're we're conducting our growth and development responsibly under an actually laid out plan that takes into consideration population and traffic influx and not just developers who want density concessions anywhere they can get it. Well, uh, Dylan, I know what you mean. I live out West and even further out hard Valley. It's just become, uh, it's crazy. There's one road in and out and everywhere you look, it looks like there's strip mining the Hills. Uh, yeah. It's just wild. But on the other hand, you have to balance it with the fact, you know, sure. I'm in real estate and I'm keenly sure. aware we don't have enough housing in this county. Sure. We don't have enough houses that people can afford. Um, sure. Do you have any idea what we could do about that? And if you've got a good answer, we probably ought to make you president. But uh, what, what can we do? <laughs> well, you know, at this point, the, the county commission has so many tools at its disposal that it's simply not using to encourage the right kind of development. You know, we're, we're giving density concessions and development concessions on neighborhoods of multi-story single family residences with, you know, four and five bedrooms, two and three bathrooms that cost half a million, six hundred thousand dollars. You know, we have tax incentives at our disposal. And of course, I'm not all for using those willy nilly, but we have tax incentives like pilot programs we can use to encourage affordable developments and smaller single family residences that people can actually afford. 
you know, we can, we can develop and build inventory, good inventory in a way that doesn't drive prices up and allows everyone in Knox County a place to live and doesn't continually push them to the county line by pricing them out. You know, we're going to get to a point where our workers, our working class in Knox County just can't afford to live here. They're going to have to move into some of the outlying counties, and that's ultimately going to lead to some of them seeking alternative employment. So not only is this developing it, development issue going to cause a housing crisis, it's going to cause an economic crisis because we're just going to price out our workers to the point where we don't have any left. Yeah, that's a good point. Hey, well, let's uh, kind of shift gears a little bit and tell us sure. a little bit about yourself. What kind of work do you do? Uh, what brought you to this region? Uh, uh, maybe your family situation? Let us know. Yeah, so I graduated from Carson Newman University and then took the first job I could get in Knoxville working for a mortgage company. I uh, managed several portfolios of loans. I performed uh, audits to make sure we were in compliance with federal financial regulations. I did that for about four years um, until I decided to pursue my master's in strategic communication. And now I run communications for an international data service at Oak Ridge National Labs. Interesting. Yeah, it's it's interesting. It means a lot of uh, 3 a.m. calls with Europe or Japan and a lot of late night calls with other countries. But it's it's really cool. It's an awesome experience. Uh, OK, so what made you decide you needed to run for a county commission? Well, public service is something I've always wanted to get in, at, at least at the local level, because I, I feel it's where you can really get things done. You know, I don't have any interest in getting caught in the in the gridlock of Nashville or, or Washington, but, you know, public service at the local level has always interested me. You know, I had some friends talk to me about some of the issues they felt were, were affecting Knox County and had some members of the community kind of encourage me to, to do it. And, you know, I, you know, I felt like it was time, you know, I, I feel like we're in an inflection point in Knox County with both public education and this development crisis we're seeing. And I just felt like it was, there was no better time than now to kind of throw my hat in the ring. Well, good. Well, uh, let's say uh, there's some loyal Democrats watching tonight and sure. uh, they decided they like what they hear. They want to get a hold of you. What's what's the best way? Do you got a, you have a website or, or yeah. some way to get a hold of you? Yeah, the website is electdillonearly.com. It's E-A-R-L-E-Y for the last name. Um, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, the email right now is electdillonearly at gmail.com. And uh, my personal number is on the website. Feel free to give me a call on that, too. I, um, I was told by my, my girlfriend not to give my personal number out, but you know, <laughs> I always wanted to talk, to talk to voters. So give me a shout. That's a good idea. It's good to be accessible like that. We, yeah. we certainly appreciate it. And we appreciate yeah. you, you know, taking the time, sticking your neck out. I've run before and it's, it's tough, but it's, it's a lot of fun. You know, I enjoyed it when I ran. I hope you're having fun. Oh, absolutely. I'm loving every minute of it. Love the conversations with people. Love getting to hear the different perspectives on the issues in Knox County. And I love the idea that we're just building a coalition of, of a, a diverse group of Democrats, Republicans, and independents that just want to see change in Knox County. Yeah, well, good. Like I said, we appreciate it. I always, my theory has always been if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, exactly. I agree. So, um, but uh, we've, we've got a little bit more time. Um, schools. We have kind of an unusual uh, system here in Knox County where the county commission provides the money for the school board. It really doesn't have any say over where those individual dollars go. Sure. Uh, do you have any plans or, or, or hopes or desires to, to improve the quality of uh, education for our young children? Yeah. So commission does have a line item veto authority over the school board's budget. And I mean, that's such that's such a great tool to use, not to withhold funding, but to set expectations and a legislative agenda for what you want to see from the school board's budget. And obviously, one of the things that's a priority for me to see in a school board budget is increased wages for teachers and support staff. We are fourth in the state in property tax income, but we don't break the top 15 in wages for teachers and support staff. And that's a shame to me. I hear so much about how we want Knox County schools to be the best in the state, but unfortunately we're not making the kind of investments to get there, to get our schools there. And of course we do have great schools in Knox County, but they could be better. They could be the best if we would just be willing to make the investments into the schools, the classrooms themselves, the teachers and the support staff. So certainly a priority for me. And, you know, the County commission and school board need to become more collaborative bodies. You know, at this point there's no communication, no collaboration between the two of them. 
and they need to be better at that. I've talked to members of the commission and the school board and they are, you know, both of them agree they need to be more collaborative. It's just not happening. So it would certainly be my goal and expectations once I get to the commission. Hmm. Well, I, I may have misspoke then. I, I didn't think that the county commission had, you say they have do have line item veto over the they school do. board. Mm-hmm. Well, I was wrong when I was saying that. I, I've learned something new today. <laughs> Glad I came. Sure. Uh, well, uh, uh, good luck to you. Thank uh, you. We've uh, you got about a, we got about a minute and a half left, two minutes left. What, what do you want to say? What's your what's your say something? Dylan? Yeah, sure. You know, for anybody watching Democrat, Republican, Independent, I would certainly appreciate your support in August. You know, I'm, I've done my best to run a platform that is not a Republican, Democrat platform, but a, a platform of issues that are truly affecting the people of Knox County. You know, because ultimately I don't plan to go there and represent just Democrats or just Republicans. I plan to represent regular Knox Countyans. That's the goal for me. And I'd love support from anybody. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I like that. We need to work together as a community to try to make things better. So, yeah. hey, this is Greg McKay. That about wraps up DTV for tonight. I want to thank Dylan for a very, Dylan for a very interesting conversation. Yeah. Uh, we'll return uh, Friday at 9 30 and we hope to see you then and invite you to watch uh, every week on dtv thank you thank you